Is this an image of a cowrie shell or money? The answer is both. For centuries, the extremely durable cowrie shell was used as a medium of exchange in various parts of the world. In today's modern economy, we use currency in place of shells and the like. However, the basic concept is still the same. Having currency allows for the operation of efficient markets. Without it, an orange grower that wanted a suit would have to wait for a suit maker that wanted to trade a suit for oranges. This concept is called the double coincidence of wants. The coincidence of the want for suits and the oranges matching up. Until 1958, silver certificates were co commodity backed money, backed by silver, as indicated by the words silver certificate printed on the bill. Today, U.S. bills are backed by the Federal Reserve, but as fiat money. Money is mainly defined by three characteristics today. Store of value, unit of account, and an opportunity for deferred payment. M1 and M2 money have several definitions, ranging from narrow to broad. M1 equals coins and currency in circulation, plus checkable demand deposits, plus traveler's checks. M2 is defined as M1 plus saving deposits, plus money market funds, plus certificates of deposit, and other time deposits. These definitions allow for the measurement and tracking of the money supply. Banks act as financial intermediaries because they stand between savers and borrowers. Savers place deposits with banks and then receive interest payments and withdraw money. Borrowers receive loans from banks and repay the loans with interest. In turn, banks return money to savers in the form of withdrawals, which also include interest payments from banks to savers. A balance sheet is an accounting tool that shows an entity's current financial position. Banks have balance sheets. An asset is something on a balance sheet that has value that is owned and can be used to produce something. A liability, also on the balance sheet, is debt. One way to view liabilities is that they are claims, the claims of creditors on the bank's assets. Finally, net worth is the bank's own claim on its own assets. A balance sheet can be summed up with this equation. Assets equals liabilities plus net worth. A balance sheet is a great tool to allow us to see how banks operate and how they can actually create money. But first, let's define some accounts on the balance sheet shown here. Deposits in the liabilities and net worth side are the funds that people bring to the bank and put in checking and savings accounts. Deposits are liabilities because the owners of the checking and savings, savings accounts have claim on those assets and they can come and withdraw them if they would like. On the asset side, the bank has a choice to keep the deposits or its liabilities, the money, in a vault in its bank. In this case, they choose to keep $2 million. These are called reserves. The bank can also lend these deposits out to borrowers. These are called loans, also an asset. The last asset the, banks, the bank has here are U.S. government securities. These are investments in the U.S through bonds and notes. If we use the balance sheet equation, assets equals liability plus net worth, we see the bank's net worth is $1 million. If a bank's net worth is negative, then it is actually considered bankrupt. Now that we know about balance sheets and the accounts that banks have in a balance sheet, let's talk about how banks create money. Here's an example. Bank A has $10 million in deposits. It also has $10 million in reserves. Let's say that the bank decides to loan money out, in this case to Hanks Auto Supply, in the sum of $9 million. As soon as Bank A loans that money to Hanks Auto Supply, Hank will take it and redeposit it in Bank B. Bank B now has a choice to either keep that money in reserves or to go ahead and lend it out, and it does. Bank B lends out $8.1 million of that money. The borrower of that loan will now deposit it in Bank C, another bank, and then Bank C will have the decision whether to keep 
or lend out its reserves. As shown, in, as shown in yellow here, we see that the initial deposits of $10 million are then multiplied through lending. So we have the initial $10 million plus another $8.1 million, and then perhaps even from Bank C, another loan might go out as well. This creates money. This connection, this actual setup is called fractional reserve banking. The reason that m banks don't lend out all of their money is because of a requirement they have been given from the Federal Reserve. So this bank requirement is a regulation that requires them to keep a certain percent of total deposits on hand or in reserve. This helps provide stability to the banking system. The reserve requirement is an important part of the solution to this next question. That question is, if new money enters the banking system, how much money will ultimately be created from it? The answer to this is the money multiplier as pictured here. An estimate of the ultimate potential of money creation in the banking system is found by multiplying the new funds by one divided by the reserve requirement. This multiplier is not perfect, but it is a tool to estimate the impacts that regulations and policies that create new money can have ultimately on the economy.